Hello and thanks for joining me again. I've been teaching on witchcraft for a number of videos now and today we finished that. So today I'm coming to the exciting bit. How do we get free from witchcraft? How are we delivered from this? Even the, the habit of trying to dominate other people or even more evil side of witchcraft, voodoo and so on and sorcery. How do we get free as Christians? We cannot get free by excessive church attendance, big offerings, or even repeated scriptures. The only way out is by execution. Paul wrote in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. That's the way out. The key scriptures are in Romans 6 verses 3 to 6. Now do take a little time and read those scriptures. I can't read them all on a seven minute video, I can't do it, it's not the time. But Paul wrote there, are you ignorant of the fact that all of us who are baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? So in other words, he's saying, and follow the logic of those scriptures, when he died, we died. And therefore in verse 11, reckon yourself to have died. The old David is dead, this is not the old David. This is not who I used to be, he's dead. And I reckon myself dead. That's the way out of witchcraft. Now, I use this illustration a lot to help you uh, understand. I'm sorry if you've heard it before and you're fed up with it. But when my granddad was in the war, in the 1914-18 war, First World War, he nearly got killed in 1917. Now, if he had been killed in that war, my mother would never have been born in 1921. And guess what? If she'd never been born, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. I would have died in my granddad. So when Christ died, the concept is when he died, because I am in him, I died also. Now this idea, this concept of being in Christ, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, when we were born again, the Holy Spirit placed us in the body of Christ. And so we're in him. That's where we are, that's where we stay. That is our location. And by having been placed in Christ, Paul talks about that as a spiritual circumcision. Now read these scriptures here, which are in Colossians 2, verses 11 to 15. Now because we have been placed in him, and we've suffered, or not suffered, but we have undergone spiritual circumcision then we can get the benefits of that spiritual circumcision because Jesus in that one offering he absolutely cancelled and blotted out the handwriting of everything that was written against us all the stuff we've done all the sins all the stupid decisions and all the nasty things we may have done cancelled nailed to the cross you know, you need some tissues when you read these scriptures. They're there on the notes. God disarmed the principalities. Satan is defeated. That's the key thing. And we have died in Christ because of his single offering. So the road to deliverance from witchcraft is pretty simple. If we live a carnal life, which is when we used to, we used to do, we probably some of us are still doing that, dominated by our carnal five senses, then we are not free. Our, our soul can be affected by evil spirits of witchcraft. The crucifixion dealt with that, but we have to apply it. We have to take it for ourselves. That crucifixion followed by the triumphal resurrection of Christ disarmed the devil by a single blood sacrifice as the Lamb of God. Our part is to trust in the completed, finished work and by faith renew our way of thinking and say, well, he died, I died, and start walking in the Spirit. Now, when you do that, there's quite a number of <laughs> adjustments to make to walk in the Spirit in a consecrated way of life. Here are a list of things that we need to adjust. We've got some some adjustments to make, but Christ did the job. We've got to read the scriptures, believe the scripture, and then make these adjustments. 
We must stop being carnal and walk spiritually, be dominated by our spirit. As I say, carnality is where logic dominates and stuff, stuff like that. We must replace theology. Don't just keep reading the scripture and see and find out who God is, what's he like, etc. Theology. We must replace theology by revelation. See? If if you, you don't know anything about my arm, I have to reveal it, see? Reveal it to you. I can't otherwise you don't see it. And God doesn't allow us to know him unless he reveals himself to us. So theology must be replaced by revelation. We must realise, thirdly, we don't need education, 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 as the politicians tell us. We need discernment, which is a gift of the Holy Spirit. To know things in God, we need to discern him and to understand him. Church programmes, full thing, church programmes. You go into church, there's a programme. You start at such and such time, you have the announcements, you have the hymns, you have the singing, you have the sermon and so on. Programs must be replaced by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit lead your church service. Let the Holy Spirit lead everything, your daily life, what you're going to eat for lunch. Let him lead you. Okay. Fifthly, eloquent speeches. So much eloquence in, in church. Eloquent speeches. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 4 and 5, my speech was not elegant. It was not to... Eloquent or elegant, neither. He said, I came to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit. Supernatural power must replace eloquent speeches. And then a couple more, strongholds of logical thinking. People say to you, well, this is truth or that truth. Well, that's not logical. How can that be so? It's not logical. Well, logical thoughts must be replaced by Faith, 2 Corinthians 10, verses 4 and 5, those strongholds, the way we've always thought, get rid of it and replace it with faith. And sets of rules, which can go by the name of legalism, must be got rid of in favour of love. It's faith that works by love. We must allow the love of God to dominate us, not sets of rules. Now, these are the adjustments. If you'll make those adjustments, you're ready to dive in to the five areas in which you need deliverance. And we'll start that next time. So join me then.